Reading the comments section, which I often do, it seems I'm neglecting those true pioneers of EV motoring. The early adopters, those few brave souls who risked life and limb to be the first with an EV in the UK. <laughs> OK, maybe that's going a bit far. But the Nissan Leafs and the Renault Zoes really did start the EV trend here in the UK. And today these early EVs are for sale at ridiculously low prices. I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On. So what is Chadamo? What is a 43 kilowatt Type 1 charger or two? More importantly, if you need one, where can you find it? Well, let's go back to 1996, the pioneering era before the Leaf, before the Zoe, pretty much before anything electric, apart from the odd occasion 100 years ago, and we get to the General Motors EV1. We had lead acid batteries, cool design, with a 0 to 60 time of 8 seconds. And I was on a power par with many, including Porsche 911 of that era and the Ferrari Dino GTS. It was good. Well, in fact, it was too good. There was such demand for it that General Motors refused to sell any. The top brass feared it would just simply replace the petrol and diesel vehicle business they had spent decades building up into a highly profitable, back then anyway, uh, industry employing tens of thousands of people. Well, they leased them. And they claimed they couldn't sell any because they needed real-world data before going into mass production. Well, they got the data, but they scrapped it anyway. Yeah, literally scrapped it. They crushed the cars they still had and issued a recall for all the others. Those that couldn't get back, they disabled the electronics. They really did not want to have this on the roads. Just makes me wonder if someone is sitting there uh, wondering, oh, how could I have got it so wrong? We could have been the world leaders and Elon Musk might still be dabbling around with PayPal. Anyway, the genie was out of the bottle and the other legacy automakers began looking into launching their own. Toyota sprang first with the first hybrid, the Prius, in 1998. And then Nissan became the first to get a 100% EV to market in late 2009. And then it won Green Car Vision Award, it was European Car of the Year, World Car of the Year, and Car of the Year in Japan. Well, that arrived for sale in the UK in 2010 and was and remained the world's best selling EV until 2020 when the Tesla Model 3 overtook it. There were no standards for batteries, chargers, range, anything like that. This was all brand new technology. Different manufacturers chose different standards when it came to charging them. In Europe and the USA, the CCS2 eventually became the standard for all except Tesla, which did its own thing. When America, this is the NACS, North American Charging System, that we know today. And the UK, it was a slightly larger version of that, looking more like a Type 2 socket. Japan chose Chadamo, and the reason for the horrible name uh, is actually really amusing. Well, I can't speak Japanese, but I'm told it comes from a phrase uh, which is charge the move, uh, a phrase meaning charge for moving. And it's, that is actually a pun on the Japanese phrase, o cha de mo ikaga desuka, or apologies for the pronunciation. But that means let's go and have a cup of tea while charging. But whatever the real origin, the Chadamo became Japan's standard and remains so to this day. Nissan Leafs appeared on the roads in 2010 and they all had Chadamo and most still do today. The Leaf was the best selling EV in the world, but it was a very small market and hardly had any competition. It took a long time to reach 10,000 world sales. To today, total sales stand around 600,000. You just got to realise that Tesla Gigafactory Shanghai now produces almost twice this each year. Because in 2010 there were no standards, early public EV chargers hedged their bets and installed chargers with Type 1, Type 2, AC, CCS, Chadamo, and that covered all of the EV on the roads at the time. So you could go to any charger and there'd be a plug for you. Well, today we still have those three. Although Chadamo is in some ways falling out of fashion, the growth of EV chargers was certainly leisurely back then. There were less than a thousand public chargers of any sort in 2012, 
that grew to over three and a half thousand by 2016. The majority were, whoa, were the fast chargers way under 50 kilowatts. Well, today, again, we're installing more than 4,000 rapid and ultra rapid chargers this year alone. And we have hundreds of thousands of slower so-called fast chargers, which are less than 11 kilowatts. When 2018 Europe adopted the CCS2 as standard for all EVs and required all EV charging manufacturers to include a Type 2 plug and a CCS2 plug. It did allow them to add any additional plugs it thought they, they thought might be necessary, so CHAdeMO lived on, but was falling out of favour. It was only used by Japanese manufactured EVs and the latest ones, like the Aria, now have CCS2 and no CHAdeMO. Well, strangely, Tesla was excluded from the European Directive as they were deemed not to be a public charging network because the general public, those who didn't own a Tesla, couldn't charge there. Tesla did, however, adopt CTS2 voluntarily, but also Tesla did manufacture and sell a Tesla to CHAdeMO adapter, meaning Teslas can charge a CHAdeMO chargers or a CCS2 charger, or a Tesla proprietary V1, 2 or 3 charger, or a Type 2 or Type 1. Well, these adapters for Jadamo are readily available still, and they're on offer a little over £100 on eBay, making Teslas the only EVs in the world that can charge at any charger ever made anywhere in the world. But of course that doesn't help Nissan Leaf owners. Well, Japan never gave way and still installed Jadamo sockets on the Nissan Leaf today. But alongside the CHAdeMO will always be a Type 1 or 2 AC charger. The CHAdeMO can't do both. It's also different in that it allows bi-directional charging, meaning you can plug it into a home charger and the car can power your house. And that's something that is now coming into fashion big time and it's probably going to make the older uh, Nissan Leafs particularly attractive if you fancy using one as a battery storage. Anyway, so a quick summary. Unless you buy a Nissan Leaf, every other EV on sale in the UK will have CCS2 socket and can accept a CCS2 plug, as found in every public charger, and can also accept a Type 2 AC plug, as found in fast DC public chargers and home chargers. Like mobile phones, the standard now makes it really easy for everyone Buy any EV other than Nissan Leaf and you can charge it at every public charger using the appropriate plug. If you have a Nissan Leaf, you can charge at any Type 2 charger, but DC rapid charging is restricted to those chargers that do have CHAdeMO plugs, and the law does not make them a requirement. And for those in hope of getting an adapter, they are just becoming available for a CHAdeMO to CCS2 adapter, but they are horrendously expensive. We're talking about $7,000. So it's not a realistic proposition when many of the older cars are only worth three or 4000 Anyway, a number of EV networks have, have already removed the CHAdeMO plugs from their latest chargers, and GridServe is one that is going through that process. Now, none of these will remove any, any uh, CHAdeMO plugs that are already fitted. It's just that they won't install new ones. Well, GridServe, we have with uh, 360 kilowatt Intelligent Charger, the latest one, offers up to 100 miles of range in five minutes. That one doesn't have CHAdeMO at all. It's two CCS2s. Others, like Osprey, are actively installing reliable high-power chargers with CHAdeMO on every single charger. So each of the chargers, for example at Preston, um, they, each charger has one CCS2 and one CHAdeMO. It's everywhere. Now moving away from uh, Nissan, Renaults were not far behind and the earliest model, the Zoe, actually previewed at the Geneva Motor Show in 2005. Then the Frankfurt Motor Show 2009 and finally, just before launch, the Paris Motor Show in 2010 before the final release in 2012. Yeah, that was way back then. Now many of the concept ideas have been abandoned like the battery swap option and the gullwing doors. 
Until 2015, the battery pack was a meager 22 kilowatt hours, and the AC Type 2 charger could take any power rating up to 43 kilowatts. You still see these 43 kilowatt Type 2 chargers around, but I have to say less and less as time goes on. Most networks are now concentrated on limit of 11 kilowatts or 22, because 11 kilowatts is by far the vast majority of EVs limit for AC charging. Well, from 2019, the battery, the battery pack was increased to 52 kilowatt hours and now had the option for a CCS2 socket, allowing rapid DC charging up to 50 kilowatt and a fast charging via type 2 socket at a maximum of 22 kilowatts. The quoted charging times are 15 to 80 percent is 54 minutes, and 15 to 100 percent is 1 hour 18 minutes. While home charging at 7 kilowatts will take just over 6 hours and fire a 3 pin plug into a 13 amp socket it takes about 23 hours. The older Zoe's are really nifty little cars but they have a realistic range of well under 100 miles. They are just little runarounds, the early ones. Charging on the old, older models is always done via AC, nothing else. But if you can find a 43 kilowatt AC charger at a sensible price it will prove to be almost the same speed as a modern 50 kilowatt CCS2 charger. So 10% to 80% state of charge in around 40 minutes. Well, it's just amazing these days to look back and think 43 kilowatt was the maximum charging speed when we now have Hyundai, Kia, Porsche and they all do round about 300 kilowatts. Also, a quick look back will re reveal a frightening lack of EV public chargers for those back then brave enough to try a road trip. But they are out there. And on my recent trip down to Cornwall, I was having a coffee and a cake in extra services when I was recognised and I met Dr Gripper from way down in Cornwall. Well, he's got two Renault Zoes and he said he's just back from one of his regular trips right across Europe, right down to the toe of Italy. Well, I always say a bit of patience and pre-planning makes most things possible. If you make your journey part of your holiday, speed is no longer a, pro pro no longer a priority. 43 kilowatt AC chargers still out there. Chatterman chargers are still being installed to this day. Eight are being installed in Preston right now and four more in Leyland. Neither will disappear in the short term, but longer term CCS2 and Type 2 will dominate. Zapmap and WhatsApp both have filters on their maps which allow you to find those specific chargers easily. And with so few of those older cars on the road, they're unlikely to be busy when you get there. Well, thanks very much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please click the like button. And if you would, please subscribe. It makes such a difference to us as a new channel. If you click the bell icon, the notification, you'll be notified the next time we launch a video. And a massive, massive, massive thank you, last but not least, to our Patreon members. This side of the business is growing dramatically. We've had our most successful month ever. And thank you so much for your support for the channel. I'm Dave.